Benjamin special. Um, we're going to put aside the ball for one second and we're going to make some bread. Um, apparently my bread's pretty good. Uh, people seem to like it. I just follow a recipe. And this has been the recipe that my mother taught me a long, long time ago. I used to make bread when I was eight years old. For a family of, there are eight of us. So a family of 11. A family of 11. Quick math. Eh, not a strong suit. So what you're going to need for this particular recipe is some kosher salt. Doesn't matter if you do or should not. It works just fine. And you're going to need some measuring cups to measure out that salt. I have a little half big teaspoon. It's just a tablespoon, not a teaspoon. But it's a half because somebody broke the other one. So now I'm going to have to measure twice as much, Miss Rachel. And then I actually need, well, I'll go to what I need, but it won't feel like that. Okay. You're going to need a one cup to measure out your flour. Dry good. Makes a difference. And a, a liquid measuring cup. I usually go for the two cup. You can go as far as like four or five cup. But for this, uh, for this you don't really need um, anything more than just a two cup. And we're going to need some yeast. I usually, this is pretty much the only yeast I've ever tried or used or done anything with. Um, it makes it really easy and I really like the jar. I'm irrational, I like jars. So sue me. And you've seen this before. We're gonna use some honey, you can use agave nectar, you can use sugar, um, pretty much anything that will feed your yeast. It's very important to put this in. And another important ingredient is our vitamin C. People don't put this in and they wonder why their bread goes flat. You know, flatter than a 10 year old. You got to put this in because it'll feed your yeast, it activates your yeast, it'll make that nice fluffy texture that everybody seems to like in bread. And then of course, vegetable oil and a big heaping bucket of um, flour. And then to put it all together, we've got our Bosch. Wonderful. Don't like Kitchen Age. Don't like anything else. Bosch. And some pans, of course. So I'm going to warm the tap up. Um, the first ingredient will be five and a half cups of hot water. So we're just going to kind of, you know, sploosh that in there. One and a half. That makes five and a half cups. Glad you can count. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we've got our vegetable oil. I usually do the vegetable oil before the honey. That makes um, the honey kind of go out easier, um, pour out easier. And so we're just doing a um, two thirds of a cup. So I'm just gonna pour this in here until it hits two thirds. Right, right, yeah, right there. And another sploosh, a little splooshy sploosh. We got our honey. We're not gonna need this cap. Just kind of anywhere it wants to go. Just let it go. And let's see, two thirds. It's still got a little bit of oil in it, which is fine. Try not to make a mess. There we go. That's going to make a mess. Here. Don't matter. Don't matter. And then, then that'll just kind of go on there. I know what you're thinking. You're like, that has a spout. You could use a spout, but, you know, it'll go just fine the way it is. I kind of leave that upside down. I got my kneading arm in here. So I just kind of let it rest. All right, now this is done drip drying. So it's not really dry, but that's all right. I just got yelled at for throwing that cap across the, the kitchen. I'm really tempted to throw this cup. Do not throw the cup. <laughs> Stop it. It's going to go. It's going to go. <laughs> We're done with the measuring cup. It can go in the sink. 
Now, we need two tablespoons of salt. The kosher salt. For a long time, before I could read, I thought I said Mormon. But it doesn't. I was like, why the hell is anybody buying Mormon salt? Well, other than the Mormons. No, turns out this is Jewish salt. <laughs> so I go back to my little, you know, one. This isn't even the right. This is the teaspoon. <laughs> so we don't need this. Stop throwing stuff. And we need this one. This is the half tablespoon. Half tablespoon. Same rules apply. Go. I'm gonna gonna have to put in four of these with the Jewish salt. One. Timber, you leave that spoon alone. Get it, Tim. <laughs> Three. Four. Now we got that. Now it's time for our vitamin C. Vitamin C, any vitamin C will do. If you get a citrus vitamin C that, like, tastes like oranges, it's meant to be chewed up, I would probably strike it. Because then your bread is going to have this nice, like, medicine-y flavor, which is not good. Oh, there's our... Yeah. One tablespoon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you... Yeah. One tablespoon. Broken. <coughs> That's why we can't have nice things, Rachel. So, you're going to need about a thousand milligrams of vitamin C. All right. <laughs> now, we got the pill here. Just put it in there. Get your other spoon. Put it on top. And then you use your He-Man woman-hating muscles and squish the heck out of it. <laughs> and then try not to feed the dogs with it. <laughs> Okay. Well, June's isn't going to get sick anytime soon. We need some vitamin C going on. And I'm just trying to break up the bigger chunks here. Because that's the last thing you want when you're biting in a piece of nice, freshly baked bread. Is a chunk of vitamin C. Now look at this beautiful pill. Look at it. Getting a little sniffy just looking at it. And just bump that in. That's your vitamin C. Try to get as much as you can in there. Ugh. Don't need these anymore. Now it's time for our yeast. This is a nice brand new yeast. So usually when you when you open these, as soon as you open them, you gotta store them in the freezer. That way your yeast kind of hibernates. I like that. Wonderful snap. Now, usually it's three heaping tablespoons, but we're gonna have to go with six minor heaping half tablespoons. Double check that I got the right one this time. Six. Sploosh in there. Done. Don't need that anymore. Put the lid back on this, and this is going right back into the freezer. Now we're going to start adding some flour. I usually turn my mixer on low. Just going to let it go for a little while. I know it's a little loud. I'm sorry. I'll speak up. And then to start off with, I just got to put four ish cups of flour in. This will make a nice paste. Ooh, 
kind of let that kind of turn them out for a little bit, and that's to get just get all the clumps broken up, so you're not having like a huge ball of yeast or a ball of salt or a ball of whatever you decided to put in there. I ain't gonna catch balls of anything, and I'll just kind of break it up, mix it up. I mean, it is just a kneading arm. It's not whisking anything. It's just kneading very slow. So I'll probably let that go for. Yeah, a minute or two. Yeah, not not a whole lot. All right. Well, one. You don't have to do this part. I just like playing with it. It's not sticking to the sides anymore and that's what you're looking for you start seeing that it's not you don't have those tendrils that look are coming out and it's okay if it goes over the top of the mixer that's fine it'll beat itself down after a while now that it, now that it's mixing um, I usually just kind of cover it and just let it knead let it work itself out for 20 to 30 minutes. Um, a lot of people that do hand mixing, they think that's a little too much, but you can't argue with results. And so all this is doing really is just building the elasticity up in the bread. Um, it's keeping that yeast from really activating uh, fully. It's gonna activate and it's gonna rise, but it's not gonna go any, it's not gonna go full until you get it out and get it in the oven. Um, but we'll just kind of let that work on itself for, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. So, now that you've had enough time to take a nap, forget about it. Um, it's been about 30 minutes. The dough is looking fantastic. I just take my little top off here, throw it in the sink. Loud noises. Then I've got a spatula here. These little Rubbermaid spatulas work great for this. I just kind of try to get my kneading arm that I have on this Bosch. This stuff is sticky. It's gonna try to stick to your soul if you let it, but don't let it. Straight down. All right, take this off, and we've got a ridiculously small kitchen, like retardedly small. And so, what I'm gonna do is I gotta move this out of the way. Now you're gonna spread it out. 
just kind of get a nice coating over everything. And one thing people forget, and I usually forget, is you want to get the backs of your hands. Because you're gonna get you're gonna get in there. You're gonna get yeah, you're gonna get in there. And so just kind of get it so nothing will stick. You get it all over your hands so it doesn't stick to your hands. Then we got our bowl here. What I usually do is I just kind of tip my bowl on its side, get my spatula that I've got a little flour on so it doesn't really stick to the flat, doesn't stick to the spatula. And then I can just kind of give it a good cut. Cut it down this way. And then once I've cut it all the way down, kind of spread it out a little bit. Kind of free up the spindle here. Nice and clean. And just go in there with your fingers. Pull that sucker out. It's always gonna kind of stick. It's dough. Dough is sticky. Yeah. And Ooh, this dough is gonna be good. We're gonna make nice, 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 nice loaf. Ah, four loaves. This is for four loaves. This is to last you a little bit. And I just kind of pull dough out, stick it on top there. Pull dough out, stick it on top there, and then throw this in the sink. Kind of what I do is I just kind of coat everything. Everything's giving a nice, even coating of flour. And see how it's no longer sticking? Because it's got a nice, even coat of flour. And then I pick it up, tuck everything. I'm just kind of rolling my hand in, just grabbing it and rolling it in. Exposing that nice flat surface, nice clean dough. Then we lay it down. Now it's a nice even ball. Let me pick up a little bit of this, put it on top so it's not sticking to you while you're cutting it and playing with it. You gotta love your dough. This is a living thing, this is yeast. It's a living thing, you wanna be nice to it. You gotta love it. Be gentle. And just cut it into quarters. Oh, there. One half. Another half, it's already starting to rise on me. That's why we got so much dough right now. It's already starting to activate, that yeast is. Now I got some nice even sections. Manageable piles, as you may say. We're gonna lay out our bread pans here. Get a little bit of vegetable oil and it just a little dollop will do. I mean, it doesn't take a lot. Just a little drop, little drop. Ooh, that's way too much. When you get way too much in a pan, you just use that pan for the others. Then all I'm doing here is just kind of coating the bottom. You can get it with your fingers if you like. And this is just so that when the loaf is done, you can get it out of the GD pan. Otherwise, 
and you got a sticky mess. Now, I'm just picking up these loaves, and this, this is when you're actually creating the loaf. You're creating that nice, smooth surface here. And you're just, it's already kneaded, you don't gotta play with it too much. But I'm just kind of grabbing and tucking into the bottom, making a, a nice, clean loaf. And that way, when it rises, you got a nice top to it. And you just kind of give it a good flop. Flower in the edges here. Pulling the top here, pulling the top here, pulling it down, making it nice and clean. You'll notice it's starting to shrink in size a little bit. And that's just because I'm knocking out some of the air bubbles that the yeast has already tried to create. All right, now, most people would just set it on top of the oven to let it rise. Um, what I like to do, because it really needs to be about 120, 150 degrees in order for it to rise really nice. And you're, no, yeah, see, Rachel's making a face. I, this is how I do it. This is why people don't like bread. Um, so I turn my oven on the lowest setting, which is 200. Way too hot for the yeast to rise. But I'm not gonna let it preheat. I'm just gonna leave it at 200. And I'll put my beautiful loaves that I just made into the oven. Just put them in the center rack there. And let that guy hang out in front. Now, I'm not gonna close my oven door. I'm gonna leave it cracked. I'm gonna leave it open. That way when it does heat up, and it's trying to heat up to 200 degrees, that way it can't. It'll get up to around the desired temperature that I want. Um, and that'll be a nice, it'll be a nice environment for the yeast to rise. All right, now that it's been rising for a little bit, it's been rising for 20 to 30 minutes is the norm. This one, this yeast was like a little too active. It's like, bam, it wants to go. This yeast is like the go-getter of go-getter yeast. Um, if you look at it, uh, our loaves have almost doubled in size. Um, so what we're gonna do is just close her up. Turn her up to 350. 350. 350, 350. And then that's gonna just sit there and marinate for you know half an hour or so. Make sure it hit the bell. If you'd like to get notifications on our upcoming posts. And if you'd like to see this again, make sure to subscribe. And have a fun week. Okay, honey. Ready? Mm -hmm. Well, hello there, fuckers. Babe, you can't say that. <laughs> 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 That's <cute. Okay. laughs>